Good evening, good evening to your Tuesday training. This is Claudia Borges from Ontario, Canada. And today we have a special, special guest. Our special guest of the night is not other than Dr. Ramunda, our health expert. And I want to greet Avis from Malaysia, Eve from Connecticut, Faye from Singapore, Got that right, Hefea. Sonia from USA, Jillian from San Martin, Adriana from Florida, and Sandra from Albuquerque, if I'm correct. <laughs> so these are uh, great friends from all over the world. And I'm so excited about this topic, Dr. Ramunda. My goodness. Uh, health is uh, something. Yay, Albuquerque here. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Very good, Sandra. All right. So, Dr. Munda, let's greet our viewers of the night and let's, let's greet the viewers. What's up? What's up, everybody? Hope all is well. This is your girl, Ramunda, with the DR in front, coming by way of what? Great, awesome day, great, awesome evening, great, awesome night. But guess what? This is a great opportunity for you to come in and learn about your microbiomes and your gut health. That's it, Claudia. We great represent gut yeah, health. Yeah, yeah. So anybody that loves a little bit of education, this is what we're here for, our gut health expert, gut health educator, and uh, we have a night full of writing. If you want to write this or if you want to watch it on the recording later on, we're going to post this on social media. It's already on the live stream. So let's start, Dr. Ramunda. You know, when I started getting really um, interested in this topic... Uh, I had never really heard the word microbiome. I always heard the word health, but I never heard before the word microbiome. Mm -hmm. And so let's start with that microbiome. What is microbiome? Microbiomes is organisms like, you know, that's associated in our gut, such as the fungi, the viruses, the bacteria that grows and develop in our gut line and as well. So microbiome is based on, talk about the certain like diseases, you know, the diseases of the body, you know, things like that. So it, hand, it goes into the environment of our gut, associated with the environment of our gut. So a lot of times, um, different parts of the body, like your skin, certain areas of your body are affected by what goes on in your microbiome. So like, for example, if you have a, a, a candida uh, overload, you see, if you got bacteria or infection in your gut, all these things plays a role in your microbiome. Wow, that's very interesting. And that's what I, when I started learning about microbiome, the way that they described it to me, and I wanna share a little bit of that is, uh, we are an ecosystem and the person that was teaching me said that we have more more organisms in our body than stars in the sky in the sky really yeah and that we had spent so much time uh trying to see what was out there and that uh, we had not started looking at what was inside of us and now that for over 20 years god has become the topic of the day now they realize that they know so little so uh, they say that it's only about 10% of our microbiome that is known and that every microbe is essential and that as we lose them, we cannot a lot of the times bring them back. We bring back some new ones, but it is an ecosystem. And if people know the meaning of ecosystem, I want everybody to picture an aquarium, but not the, like the, the weakest... not the water, you know, not the, the, the ones that have the like two or three fish, but the saltwater aquariums that are like yellow fish and big fish. And, and then they have other things that we can't recognize and some clean the glass and some clean, or if you have been in a coral reef, that's my, that might work even better in your head. But if you haven't, that's why I give the example of the aquarium mm -hmm. they all need each other and then the little fish eat plankton and then the larger fish eat the little fish and it just goes around and around and that's what's happening inside of us can you believe that yeah. i love it dr munda i love the science of microbiome yeah so it's interesting because they hang out in certain areas of the body so it's not like they just over a whole entirety it's like they hang out in certain areas like 
you know, like I said, they might hang out in a corner somewhere. They may hang out in the, you know, the left field somewhere. But they not, it's not like they overriding, suffocating, or struggling within the gut. They so they hang out in certain places. And even though, here's my question, even though microbiome we associate as an ecosystem in our body, we associate it that it's in our gut, but it's not only in our gut, it's it's also in our in our in, our, your skin. in our mouth, right? In, in our your, mouth yeah, right. and, and and it's in different parts of our body. That's what you're saying, right? Like yep, we have yep, it. Yep. Yeah, it's incredible. So they say that we have more bacteria than cells in our body. We have about 300 trillion bacteria in our body, like Dr. Ramonda says, and they're all living with synchronicity. Now, why do you think it's important that we understand that what microbiome is? Like, why do we need to educate people on microbiome? The reason why I believe that we need to educate people about it because it's another avenue to why we have viruses, where they connect to viruses, bacteria, fungi. People don't have nothing to connect it to, you see. So when you're looking at microbiomes, you're looking at that as way as like, what's happening in your gut today? What is doing this? What's happening? What's causing this to happen? Or, you know, why is it being overrided with such, you know, um, uh, trigger forces, you know, in our body? So when our bodies are, you know, Again, I always talk about the digestive system because the digestive system is a reason why we have the microbiomes as well. So my thing is like, I think you heard me always say, if you're not digesting properly, your body's not absorbing properly, not gonna digest properly. So what happens in the midst of us not digesting properly? So we have these microbiomes, all these organisms that are in our body. You have good and you have bad. Depends on how you feed them is how they regulate and dominate the system. Depends on what the system is going through. It could be emotional, could be going through something emotional. So our bodies are our bodies are like, oh, it's like it's like a, a mystery sometimes. It's like, mm. but they don't talk about the mystery of the gut, the microbiomes in the gut. They don't talk about it like they should. They they kind of keep that as one of them low kind of conversation. But why are you not educating them? Because they need to know what bacteria come from. They need to know what the viruses are stem from. They need to know these things. So when you when you're not teaching them about it, they don't have an idea that it's organisms that because of how you feed them is how they grow. And depends on what you feed them is how they regulate and, and dominate the system. Uh -huh. and, and you said it right. I also when I was learning this topic, one of the things that I was taught was that just to make it easier, we call it good bacteria and bad bacteria. But the mm -hmm. person that was teaching me this, he said, there's no such thing as bad bacteria. They're not really bad. They're just opportunistic, which is what you said. So right. if you're feeding them green vegetables and all the colorful vegetables and, you know, good quality uh, protein, they will thrive. But if you're feeding them sugar and you're feeding them junk food and you're feeding them greasy food, then the opportunistic bacteria will mm -hmm. actually start having a party in your gut. <laughs> and that is the problem that's going to cause a lot of the issues that we have nowadays. Because so microbiomes, gut microbiomes can help help with digestion. Again, like you said, depends on what you're digesting, what you're putting in your body. So they can they have they have they 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 play a good role and then they can play the opposite role. Again, is how you feed it is how it grows. So gut microbiomes that also can help with your digestion, help with, you know, your body destroying harmful species that comes into our digestive system. Um, so yeah, so microbiomes is a word that most people don't realize. Um help to control the immune system. Just the littlest things that we don't think about when they talk about gut health, gut health, overall gut health. And when we read, we see that, you know, there, there's some discrepancies. People say 75, others say 80, others say 85, but it's around 75 to 85 and other in the articles that I found uh, that our immune system is actually controlled by our gut and our mm -hmm. microbiome so you said it right dr ramunda if 80 percent, just to average it 80 percent 
of immunity comes from the gut, then how important is the gut? That is mm -hmm. how how important it is. Your so, gut is definitely your lifeline. Your gut is truly your lifeline. Your lifeline. You say you know the old saying saying um, death starts within your colon. Well, your colon is your gut. You know, so it's, it has a starting place and it has a finishing place. And you're a hydrocolonotherapist, so your specialty is colon. And I just want to know, like, what some of the things that I'm going to start with the negative and then we'll bring it into the positive, which is how do we know that the microbiome, but first, before I go to, into that one is, so is there a different, what, what is the difference between when we talk, when we say gut and when we say microbiome? So what? What would you, how would you educate us on what is gut and what is microbiome so that people differentiate the two? So you have he healthy microbiomes. Okay, so you have healthy microbiomes and gut health. Gut health, gut is just an actual word for abdomen. Um, you know, just a, it's a, just an easier word for people to say, my gut hurt, or, or uh, because it's not your stomach. First and foremost, it's not your stomach. So when they say stomach, they identify in the wrong areas of the colon, I mean, of the body itself. So when you say, oh, my, my stomach hurt, then you're looking for the upper area. So you can use gut, belly. You know, they use the belly, the gut. You know, they're not going to sit here and say, oh, my colon hurts. They're not going to use words like that. They're not gonna <laughs> that would say, be funny. You know, and if they don't know to say my abdomen, they're not going to say, oh, my abdomen hurts. They're not, they're not going to use words like that. So gut happened to be a simple word that breaks down all the words that they normally wouldn't think to say. You see? Oh, my gut hurts. Okay, now we know your gut hurts. You see? But if I say my belly hurts, okay, we know my belly. But if I say my abdomen, my colon, my intestines, they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> And I like it. And I'm just going to go back. And I know that maybe most of the people know this, but we're talking about a digestive tract or a digestive system. And that really starts from your mouth, your esophagus, it goes to mm -hmm. your stomach. And that's why Dr. Munda is saying like, you know, for us as little kids, the easiest thing was to say, mommy, my tummy hurts. Uh, but then we have the large, the small intestine, the large intestine and the colon. And, you know, also obviously pancreas, liver, kidneys, and then right. the other organs that work for, you know, so many things that we need. But in the digestive tract, the colon is the very last part of your intestine. And it's, it's incredible because it's where, you know, you have to go through the whole highway and to know that the end of the highway is basically one of the most important ones, if not the most. And that's why you're the gut health expert. That is, if you're not taking care of what's coming in, when it comes out, it's not gonna come out in a good way or it's not gonna come out at all. And that's where the problem starts, right? Mm -hmm. So the thing is about that, you have 30 feet of a digestive tract, 30. So from the time you put it in your mouth, if you use that from the core from your mouth to your rectum and you stretch it out, so you got so many different avenues of your duodenum. It's known as your duodenum. So they got all these separate jugelium. Oh my God, my tongue is twisted today. But they have all these, you got the ileocecal valve. You got the sigma colon. But you still, but it's still one track because it's just 30 feet. So you got the small, which is 25. But what happened is, from the stomach, it enters into the small intestines before it enters into the large intestines. So you got all these tracks that breaks down before it gets to the exit of the, you know, the exit pole, as you know, you call it the rectum. So from the 25, from the time you put in, that's a cord, which is known as your esophagus, you know, that goes right into that tube, right, runs right into the stomach. So when it runs into the stomach, I wish we had a diaphragm so we can show them what it actually looks I like. I will find it for you. You can continue. Um, so when it, when it runs into the stomach, that's where the chime takes place. That's where it goes and start breaking down. It start lubricating. It start, you know, the acid, the pro, everything in that stomach acid start breaking down the foods. Now, this is where you get messed up. Where people mess up is when they start drinking along with their meals because you have natural enzymes, as you always hear me say, that breaks the foods down for you. 
So when you drink along with your meals, you, now you're diluting. And so what happens? Now you got all this food that's digesting in your body, but it's not breaking down or it's not been able to be broken down because you just diluted the enzymes that break this down for you. So there's this process right there. So now we got heartburn, indigestion, burping, gas, all of those things that's in that little hand tube and all that liquid is in there that, that climb, that climb that, that chime that's trying to break it down, it really can't like you should. Now the job is to break down what? Protein, carbs, fats. But how can it if it's been diluted? So that's why it's important not to drink any beverages along with your meals, mainly if you don't understand your saliva glands, what their job is, the, you know, the salivary glands that breaks your foods down for you. So now you enter from that tube. Now the undigested, now from the nutrients is your small intestines is where all the absorption of nutrients stop from your blood vessels, everything. That's where it dispersed. That's where everything dispersed. The kidney get this, the liver get this, the, you know, the pancreas get this. Everything gets what it's supposed to get through your small intestine, through your blood vessels, everything through that small area. So the undigested now enters into what? The large intestines. All that was not able to be absorbed through whatever needed, whatever organ needed out of it. Now that all the undigested is where the stool forms into the large intestines, where you have the last five feet. So you go from the right small into the right side, which is known as the ileocecal valve, where it enters from that and it goes up, ascending down, I mean, descending up to the ascending down round the transverse and down they go to the descending area of the rectum where it sits in that loop. That loop right there, as you see right here, if you can enlarge that for me, Claudia, this sigma right here is where people have the worst disease, where all the diseases actually flare up from and the sigma of the colon right there in that loop. Now that loop right there also sits around the pelvis area. It sits around the pelvis area. And when it sits around the pelvis area, it happily actually goes around to the lower area of your back, which actually sit on the reproductive organs of women. It sits on the prostate of men. You know, all that area right there. So behind all of this right here, as you see that ileocecal valve, that loop right there, that's it, right? Come right around on the left side because we eliminate from the left side of the body. So all that slides around the pelvis area. So from the pelvis area, it comes around and then it goes and hit that rectum. So if you have pain in your left area. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't know why kids out this time. Right? If, um, if you have pain in your left area, it's because of the inflammation that has taken place in your large intestines that's not able to move because of the dehydration, because it could be dehydrated. And that's where you get the sciatic issues come from, all these things, sciatic nerve pain, all because the sigma right around that loop right there, that little loop. I don't know if you can see my arrow or not, but all right there in that loop is your sigma. And when that sits on that nerve, all that reproductive area, you'd be surprised how the body flares up, how it flares up. So again, our, we, having that 30 feet of a digestive tract makes a big difference in what goes in must come out. So if it doesn't, just imagine, see the transverse here, the right across here at the top, that drops. So if anybody ever familiar with a pro, ever heard of a prolapsed colon, you have a prolapsed colon. So again, this is your colon, the transfer of the colon drops. When it drops, you know, how many of you have had that pouch that you see that pouch that sits at the lower part of your body? That's because the prolapse here of this colon actually has dropped. So again, your microbiomes, they will, they're healthy microbiomes that will defend for you. But again, if you're not digesting properly, your body's not absorbing properly, you don't expect to eliminate properly what you think is happening. That's when the viruses, the bacteria, the candida, all these things take place in the gut from that. Very good. Uh, Does that understand? Did everybody understand that? <laughs> yes, everybody? it was. I think it was very clear. But if you have any questions, because I really, you walked me right through that diagram, and and that's what I wanted to make sure that people understand that sometimes, uh, as we get a little bit deeper into knowing our body and what is happening, Dr. Ramunda has always said, you know digestive enzymes, absorption. It really is about that absorption because if you're not absorbing, it doesn't matter if you're having the best quality food, organic green juices, 
uh, gardening from Chauvin's uh, garden. It doesn't matter. If you're not absorbing, right. it doesn't matter. You're not going to have good health. And right. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the dysbiosis of that microbiome. So the unhealthy microbiome or the unhealthy gut, let's just put it in one. And you were saying a few of the things that may um, give you a red flag that something is not right in there. And and um, and I also want to talk um, a little bit. I want to go into permeability of the gut and why we lose that permeability and and what we can do about it. So let's go first into explaining to people some of the you know symptoms that people have when their gut is just simply not not working properly. And you said some, but let's just go over them again. So so, you, so, so you're looking at the autoimmune system. You're looking Problem. at you're looking at autoimmune system, you're looking at thyroid issues, you're looking at arthritis, you're looking at diabetes, you're looking at high blood pressure, <laughs> you know, you're looking at all of these diseases that they claim, you know, us to have known as the cancerous cells. You know, all of these things are affected by what goes on in that body. All those things. So if your autoimmune system is being attacked by those invaders known as those pathogens, those invaders, they come in and they dominate and they regulate the digestive. You can go from constipation, you can have diarrhea, you can have heartburn, you can go to bloating, you can have ir irritable bowel syndrome. All these things take place such in your, in your gut area. All these things take place in your gut area. And um, and also, just to put it into the positive, um, we we have a video in for life. And for those of you, most of you live are in for life. But if you're a guest or you're watching a video for the first time, uh, we are representative for representing for life research because we're going to go into supplementation in a minute. And it talks about transfer factor reaching payers patches. So I want to know a little bit more about what. You know, when we watch that video, if you haven't watched it, ask the person that is sending you this uh, audio or this video to send you the video on how transfer factor works in your body. And it says that the molecule reaches payers patches and that's where it explodes and delivers the information of immunity. So I want you to tell me a little bit about payers patches. Like what what are they or can we take care of them or like what what are payers patches? <laughs> what are pears patches okay so let's go to this right let me see so i'll i'll show a picture of it yeah show a picture of what pears patches is what is pears patches so okay so when you're looking at what pear patches are you're looking at the transfer fact like okay for example my my gut um microbiome gut test came back right and it and it lets me know what I'm missing that's not strong and or not strong enough to fight off anything that comes towards my body, right? So these you know these invaders you got these invaders, but I have an autoimmune system that can fight off for, fight it off, but I don't have the right missile. Okay, let me see how to say this without sounding crazy. We have there's okay. I read, a, I was teaching my class one day and we was talking about the military. You got four different stages in military, military, army, um, air force, Marines, and uh, whatever the other base is. Those Marines, are your- Marines, air force, uh, military, and- uh, Army okay. and Navy. Yeah. So those are the things that protect, the, protect us, right? That's what their job is to protect us, right? So as they protect us, sometimes one of them may lose the potency, the power, and a missile may end up getting through to attack the immune system, right? So I'm thinking, I'm trying to get my, my brain cells to connect around all these things when you got so much going on in it, you got to find, you got to go to that patch and find and bring back to the front so you can think about what needs to be thought about. So you're looking at all these things. Yeah, show a picture so we can, so I can show them. Can you see it there? Or do I show it bigger? Let me see if I can get it bigger. Oh, so much advertising. Mm-hmm. Help my, help my brain out a little bit. 
when you think as much as I do all day, sometimes it go on auto shutdown. So the payer's patch is that lining that the stomach has, and they're like little, uh, like Dr. Munda is saying, they're like warriors, and they're very tight. I just want to show this diagram right here where each of them is like a little locker box. And so these locker boxes, they're very, very close to each other. When this biosis happens, which is when problems start, is when one of these, uh, so this is an attacker right there. Do you see that attacker? He's trying to get into that lining of the stomach, the epithelial, those are payers patches. And so that the guy, and this is what Dr. Munda is saying, they're trying to get in and they can't. So if you have a healthy microbiome and a healthy gut, they'll be able to destroy and they'll be able to, to fight and stick together. You see how stuck they are? Mm -hmm. But what happens, just like when Dr. Rumunda was saying, that if you're not eating properly, you're getting a, um, a impermeability of the gut lining because you're eating things that you shouldn't, you have lots of stress, uh, maybe an autoimmune is already running through your body. What is going to happen is that this barrier, this very tight barrier, is going to uh, lose its its weapons. The Loses, army, lose, the air right. force. That now they right. they can't do anything, and now the attackers are able to penetrate. Mm -hmm. And if they penetrate, that's it. Now, the follicles of it, right? The follicles of it. So if you lose this control of the war, you lose control of the war because why? There was a weakness there. And sometimes in those linings, depends on the acidity of your body, the acidity. So you have an alkalinity and a, a, um, a, 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 a acidic and an alkalinity of your body. Depends on sometimes how acidic your body is. That's what makes the wall so thin. That's so that's, that's another thing that we have to look at. Depends on the city. How many people have actually ever checked their pH levels to see how acidity or how alkaline their bodies are? You ever heard of people say, oh, um, um, you have internal bleeding, but we don't know where it's coming from? Absolutely. My mom has that. They still can't find it. <laughs> because the lining is so thin because of the acidity of to be could be from medication. It could become from sodas because so much acid. It could become from... Um, Certain chemicals we put on. Oh, I'm sorry. We put on our skin. Wait a minute. Hold on. Sorry. Don't worry. I'll take care of it while you go. Um. So that's why it's very good to control your acidity from the moment you start your day. So when you wake sorry. up, it's good to have a nice uh, cup of warm water with lemon because that will set your gut right into a good level of acidity. Thirty minutes after you can start eating, but now your gut. Uh, from you know your sleep of seven or eight hours it's done a lot of the work that it needs to do and so if you wake up have some warm water with lemon very healthy like Dr. there says never cold especially not with ice always warm room temperature or hot if you want but uh, some lemon that's gonna really make that pH level really good for you and prepare you for the day and for what you're gonna eat through the day. So what I do is I don't add a lot of times people have to be careful because of the acid of the lemon. You got to be careful there because that's very acidic. So I drink a lot of just water, even with lime, lime the same way. I just drink straight warm water or hot water. I don't add anything to it. When I've added things to my water, like lemon, because it is so acidic, it makes me rasp. It makes raspiness in my voice because of the acid. So everybody can't do it. So you have to find what works for you and take your time and introduce your body to it. We can be so acidic because we call it calls, you can add um, um, gallstones. You got kidney stones come from your body being so acidic. You got um, gout because your body's so acidic. You see all these things stem from your gut because of the acidity in your body. The thinning of the walls in your esophagus from the so from your mouth to your thinning. So these are things that we have to be mindful of when we're talking about the body itself, the internal body itself. 
Yeah, and a lot of people may know this uh, term more than uh, more than others, which is the leaky gut, and it's very popular right now. So that leaky gut that you may have heard, maybe uh, somebody told you, or the doctor, or you read it. That's exactly what we're talking about. Leaky gut is that uh, that that little space that we were talking about, where uh, the 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 food, you know, it's supposed to give you the nutrients and then it's supposed right. to go through your intestines and get discarded. Now things are not getting discarded properly and it's leaking through that gut, leaking through those not so tight cells anymore. Mm -hmm. And now what it's causing is a uh, illness and disease because it's creating a dysbiosis of the microbiome. Now, the next, um, the next point I'm going to touch on are, you know what, Claudia, before you get to, if bowel, when they say leaky gut, that's like sepsis. In the hospital term, it's known as sepsis. A lot of people's bodies goes into sepsis shock, you know, and that's when they get to the real bad of it that you die from it. Yeah. Um, exactly. So in hospital term, you may hear the word sepsis, sepsis, sepsis. My They're friend passed away from that just in December. If you remember, Dr. Munda, I had already met you and, and uh, they said that the bacteria was so aggressive that it killed them in 19 days. And so That's it was a sister. big shock. My, Dr. My sister Bonnie, too. I think she, her friend or sister or somebody really Mine. heard of her also. So we have a lot of people dying from something as simple that we could have taken care of just because the body gives you signals. The body says, I'm not comfortable. You're not eating something mm -hmm. I should. Do. And then we allow it. So the gut is like a little, you know, plumbing problem that happened and and it starts leaking that's why it's called leaky gut just a little bit a little bit and then now you know you didn't you know over a matter of time accumulate <laughs> yeah over a matter of times accumulate um because that's what i lost my sister to um sepsis went into sepsis shock and so it was when your you, sister it was your sister. yeah was so when you have you. so much pores and inside of your body it does dominate from the heart the lungs your organs and it does weaken those organs so you know, and, and and actually in reality, if you really ever think about what actually is the number one killer is sepsis. When people go into sepsis shock. And then it's not even, it's more so to talk about the diseases, but it's the sepsis of it from that disease that actually takes you and kills you and, and wears and tears on your heart and, and leaks your heart of the bleeding. So absolutely it does. it's just so it's so easy to die from that. People don't realize how many deaths in the hospitals are from a bacterial infection that came from inside your body that your immune system was not able to control just because it got out of control. Mm -hmm. And and so that now closing in, it brings me to what can we do to have a healthier gut? Now let's talk health. Let's not talk scary things. <laughs> let's get into the good stuff and we'll finish with supplementation, but let's talk about good food for your gut. Like what are good foods for your gut? What, what does the microbiome love? It likes, to, it likes for you to take your time and enjoy your meal. That's what it likes. It likes for you to put healthy foods and good nutrition to it. It has, it's, you know, like, how many people have had sauerkraut? You ever had sauerkraut before? I love sauerkraut. I see? love sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is good. You see, how many people enjoy, you know, yogurt, you know, non-dairy Greek yogurt, you know, that's a probiotic, Here. things like that. Uh -huh. Um. Oh man. Uh sauerkraut, yogurt, which we it's more the kefir, not the sweet one. Yeah, not the uh, sweet one. Kim, That's what I said, a non-dairy one. The non-dairy. Kimchi. Quinoa. Uh, any, anything, quinoa. In, anything in vinegar, anything that you like, you know, not not the pickled cucumbers too, but those get some times people too much to put they put salt on them. Those are not well, I tell you know what I said about that, Claudia. I tell people all the time I said, do you're not supposed to mix tomatoes and cucumbers together anyway. You know, it likes, you know, you eat one or the other because of the acidity that's in the cucumber as well as in the tomato. So you eat your tomatoes, you know, you want to put on the salad, that's fine. Cucumber, cucumber salad with some onions, a little mm. vinegar in it. Good. Because what happened is cucumber has a lot of potassium. It has a lot, it keeps your gut hydrated. It's hydration, um, magnesium, uh, things like that. Zinc. It has those in it. Um, bell peppers. You know, your color, your red, orange, peppers. People like peppers. I like peppers because peppers has a lot of good nutrients in it as well. And that good snack food, uh, hummus, 
sweet potatoes. You don't need oh. something to have to cook it. You can chop it up and use it like um and put hummus with it. You know, your cute um, I'm sorry, your carrots, you know, um, earthly foods, you know, when you grow your garden, like uh, Siobhan and her garage. My grandma said, hey, me we used to sit in the yard and just eat as is. We ain't going there and cook nothing. We just ate it as is. But we so used to taking stuff out and put it in a pot and put flavor to it, season it up when it already came naturally seasoned because our ground was already what has all the minerals that it needs to have to produce that 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 food that we're eating. When we taking when we eating foods and, and you take, even if you eat something that you shouldn't, when you take your enzymes, it helps to break down the fast carbs and proteins that your body needs to have from that food. So we have to look at what type of food, even drinking. Drinking your meals, oh, you couldn't ask for nothing better when you drink it because now your body is like really getting what it needs and it keep it hydrated. It also is supposed to stimulate the muscle, the colon. Your parasite muscle have to keep that contracted moving. When you're eating foods that um, that offer protein, a good salad is a protein, good fruits and, and dog like avocado, you know, things like that. Even if you're eating nuts, you got your your walnuts and pecans, you got almonds, you know, things like that that offer your body good wellness, good nutrients, you know, not herbs. There's a difference. There's a difference. Herbs is something you have to be careful with when it comes down for people taking medication. But when you're taking supplements that are made from foods, that's better for you, you see? And so, you know, I mean... You got your, like to say, your vegetables, your your greens, and you know your snap peas. I'm not a corn person because you everybody know corn doesn't break down into the body. They know corn is made is like oily grease on your on your sternum on your tires. You know if you look at corn is made with your plastic silverware, it's made from corn. <laughs> you know? So you know watermelon. Watermelon is another fruit that is very good for hydration, but it's also another fruit that you eat by itself. Cantaloupe, you got peaches and pears, all these things. People say, they'll say, oh, you can't eat that because you're a diabetic because it's too sweet. But yet you can, but they get, but yet you're drinking a Pepsi, uh, you eating, you know what I'm saying, you're eating fries. So, so you tell me, I can't have the natural, but I can have the process. Processed food is not good for us. It's not good for us at all. But you telling me I can't have what is good for me, but I can eat the stuff that doesn't break down in my body. So you have to really know how to um, know yourself and give yourself what it needs to have. You know, my mm -hmm. whole day to day was a full day of just educating and helping people. <laughs> you know, so it's like my brain. So I got to go ahead and reach. I had to take my age pro. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, uh, I'm going to go into supplementation and, uh, and uh, you and I want to start that uh, digest reset for life challenge in August for those yeah. that did not want to do the Dr. Ronnie yes. 21 pounds in 21 days. Yes. We have a second option for you and it's our mm -hmm. digest reset for life starting on August 1st. Anybody that wants to still eat. Uh, but do it uh, fiber based, which is uh, what Dr. Ramunda likes. Yeah. She likes a fiber set, fiber based detox or sorry, cleanse. We're going to call it cleanse so that people don't get confused. Fiber based cleanse and um, having three meals a day because you need the fiber to push the food out of your body. So in this cleanse is a little bit different than the ones that you may have been right. hearing us and that we are doing in the other group. Uh, so if you didn't go into that group just because maybe you were afraid and you were nervous and I'm going to be hungry and everything, Dr. Munda and I, we're going to run a 10-day Fiber System Plus cleanse. This is going to be a really nice soft cleanse for those of you that still want to cleanse, still want to do the digest system for life, reset your gut. Mm -hmm. And I saw that Siobhan changed her, her background and I love That's that. So I want to see if I can bring her in. And give us a little bit about the food before I jump into supplementation. We're not going to touch on the whole cleanse. This, uh, this, right, not this training. time. This training is about gut and microbiome, and um, also we have a gut brain connection that is another talk, Dr. Ramon. Yep. and I yep. will talk about, which is the emotional part of the microbiome. Gabriella Daughtry is an expert on that one. 
And I think she's busy because her camera's off. So I'm not going to bring her in unless she wants to. But definitely I want to bring Siobhan because she put her page out there. And so Siobhan, we're going to start with Dr. Amunda, a 10-day uh, cleanse with fiber system flask, very different than the other one we're running. This one you have to eat. You have to eat lots of vegetables of all colors, like Dr. Munda says, peppers, tomatoes are allowed in this one, anything, as long as you keep yourself well-fed with good, high-quality, organic, nutritious food. So give us a little bit about that. Like, why should people be eating? You know, what is the difference between growing your own food and 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 buying junk food or buying things that come from a box or a bag like why because this is where we really it's going to mark the difference on microbiome health that Mia Siobhan you talk I Mia Siobhan take, I need to take her I haven't given her co-host one second because God plant you talking Mia Siobhan Siobhan I want Siobhan okay. to uh, help us with this segment there she is bring her in you're going to tag her in I gave her co-host she can come in because that's her expertise, which are veggies. Hey, oh, oh wow. Uh, <laughs> that's a big topic. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I grew these behind me. These are um, cantaloupe because, uh, yes. you know, when you were talking cantaloupe, I was looking at what I had in my virtual backgrounds here. <laughs> and we've, we've grown cantaloupe for community through Growing to Give. And you can also see sort of the yellowy ones are honeydew. So we also grew um, Dr. Amanda's favorite. These are bell peppers and they mm. start out green. They turn purple, this really dark purple. Wow. And then they get, they can turn red as you can see some of them in the bottom corner, you can see little mm -hmm. bits of red. And the, the, the longer they stay on the plant, the sweeter they, the sweeter they get, right? So if And the have, colors, right? And the colors, and the orange pepper, and yellow. Right. So what's happening is your your um, the nutritional value of food straight out of your garden or fresh from a farm market, because the farmers usually pick first thing in the morning or the night before. Right. The afternoon before a farmer's market, they're preparing all their all their goods to sell. So that is the freshest way to get food. Um, fresh food is to go to a farmer's market because and, and you can ask them straight out and I would are you bringing this food in from anywhere but your local farm because some farmer farm markets do supplement throughout the year they'll supplement with trucked in food so you're really not getting any different than you would at a supermarket but in the supermarket as you can imagine it takes time to get from the farmer's field wherever that happens to be so it could be in california and you're in uh, louisiana right that's where your fresh food is coming from could be that far away that that you know it's like california mexico they import up into canada right so that could your food could be sitting on a truck for days and days and days and days right? So it's losing every, every minute it comes off the plant, it's losing a nutritional value. I think that's wow. the first thing. So the more you can grow, whether you're growing at home on your apart, you know, you've got an, an apartment and you can only grow like some tomatoes, some peppers, uh, plants like that on your balcony in containers, do it, try it because the more you can grow, the healthier it'll be for you, right? So that, and food is really the, the nutritional value in the food is at the peak of ripeness off the plant, right? So if you know that they, they pick uh, tomatoes, they'll pick tomatoes green and then they'll gas them with ethylene. I think it is gas mm -hmm. um, to ripen them. So that's not actually being ripened on the vine, <laughs> you know? So you have, to, you have to remember that our food supply has been compromised by the, our need for convenience, right? So instead of being like our grandparents, great-grandparents, you know, generations, generations before us where, where 
there was always probably land that they grew on and they grew everything. And they, you know, maybe they got sugar from somewhere or, you know, something, but they had a cow for butter and milk. They had the garden. They learned, they knew how to preserve and dry food and all that kind of stuff. And we don't know squat, right? So the other thing I think is, and I just went off, I'm just, I'm just in my last two days of Dr. Ronnie's Detox for Longevity, and I have uh, released, wow, 21 pounds in 18 days. But the one thing I found was really interesting is my taste buds started to go wonky on me. The first week I was like, oh, butternut squash, I love butternut squash. And it was tasting good, you know, like I kind of made my pablum, I call it, because, you know, I liked it a little bit thicker than the soup. And I would... I was happy to do that. And then the next week, as the candida started and the toxins started to come out of my tongue, my tongue was coated white, the vegetables tasted horrible, like really mm-hmm. horrible. And I started to remember how amazing the flavor is of freshly grown food. So something like the cantaloupe that you saw behind me, um, we grew that. And people were lining up for this cantaloupe because I took some of it to test it at the farm market I was working at. And people were like, where do you get, where did you get that cantaloupe? And I was like, oh, it's only a test. We're just testing the rest is gone to the food banks, right? Um, and, and John's mom, she's like, never tasted the cantaloupe so good. It was, and I eat, I hate cantaloupe. I think it tastes like, you know, the bottom of your feet. <laughs> I don't know. It tastes like what so a description to me, but I absolutely love the cantaloupe. Um, the tomatoes, people, kids will say, Oh, I don't like any tomatoes, you know, Yuck, tomatoes are horrible, right? You've probably heard that from your own kids, and they've never had a fresh off the vine ripened tomato mm. just grown in like really good fertile soil because the the tomatoes in the store, they don't like taste like anything, but you put a, a cherry tomato or a Roma tomato, like behind me, these are sauce tomatoes. We grew 11,000 11, to 18,000 pounds of them. You can see we had truck loads going out. Like that's a little truck too. We had big, big uh, half ton yeah. trucks coming in from the food banks to get these. Um, and if you you take a cherry tomato and I don't see any cherry tomatoes in my background here um, but if you take a cherry tomato and pop it in your mouth oh mm, 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 good call me Campbell's (laughs) and and that's it we're done for the day (laughs) right so so I think that um, it's really important that everybody finds a way to grow food or go you know, start a community garden if you don't have a community garden in your your neighborhood. Buy land so that you save the family farms, right? Or ask a family farmer, can we do a community farm on your acreage? That's growing to give is actually, we're just in the middle of writing a grant for a Washington family farm that used to have thousands of acres and they were 108 year old Uh, family farm in eastern Washington and they lost most of it they're down to 34 acres and of course on 34 acres of farm you can't make any money I mean it's so difficult but of course with John my husband John's crop circle farm systems we can because we grow a lot of food in a small space so we're growing uh huge right we're growing um uh this this behind me is the pepper spiral so the peppers that you saw early this is a quarter acre spiral and and this is growing um those peppers there were they they were picked the day the rotary club came out and the rotary club came out and they picked uh between four and six thousand pounds in a few hours off of that pepper spiral and you can see behind me that we needed a, a lot of big things <laughs> there and there they are up close and you see them but I think um you want to go homegrown locally grown food be sure to make sure it's not being trucked in because it's grown usually with fewer chemicals you also want to ask is, is this grown with any chemicals like for instance 
ours is there's no chemicals or pesticides used because of the system and because of the spiral uh, itself and the and the uh, plants are happy because they're getting the water and and so um, I, I think that it, you have to sort of re always ask how long has this food been off the vine so if it's Mexico growing or um, California growing and you're you're not in Mexico or California it's been off the vine a long long time and so that will cause a loss of nutrients and I think that the loss of nutrients Dr. Uh, Dr. Ramunda you can probably tell me uh, probably affects your gut obviously Dr. Ronnie would say nutrient 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 right because she calls herself a nutrient doctor and that's what she was focused on giving us in our detox so um, yeah I think I think you know I think those are kind of the key things well those are good key things though because yeah. like those are because I love everything you mentioned, mainly the cantaloupe. I would juice, I used to juice the cantaloupes, the melons. I would juice them um, because, again, it's all about the absorption. You know, your body get what it needs out of it. Just like grapes. I grape, I juice the vines and everything. The seeds, the whole thing, the vine, the seeds, I juice all of it. I put all of it in there and just juice it. Watermelon, the rhymes, the same thing. The rhyme, I juice the rhyme as well, because that's where a lot of your nutrients is in the rhyme of the watermelon. So that's a great thing. Siobhan, I'm going to have to move out there with you. I mean, my God, that is beautiful. That, I, that man, I brought me back to grandma. Like, water. I know. I'm going to move out there with Siobhan, beautiful. and y'all going to see me over there in a minute. I'll be like, what? Well, that's why Dr. Ronnie keeps talking. If you've noticed, she's like, Siobhan's going to come to Martha's Vineyard. And no, we you know, going to Siobhan. We ain't going to we could we get a, a little farm there, you better believe that there's going to be some growing on Martha's Vineyard. But um, I think that you, you do have to be careful of what leaves you put in your smoothies <laughs> because some of them are actually uh, poisonous. So make sure that you check Google before you start putting your leaves in. I think grape leaves are great because what do they make? Uh, the dalamathas or dalamanthas it's greek mm. they they you know they stuff gra grape leaves yeah oh yeah yeah i love yeah. it oh it's so delicious it's the yeah and then they put it oh i love that dish i love that dish well i love this talk and uh siobhan was just a surprise but my goodness now i see that i need to do a talk again with siobhan on microbiome uh, food because we could spend like an hour talking about all the great colorful food <laughs> that uh, and Evelise is saying, I love gardening. So I wanna answer a few questions and I'm just gonna close up with, um, with a little bit more information on the cleanse. Uh, and also remember that Saturday, Dr. Munda and I will be talking about second part, microbiome health. It'll be more specific to pre-obiotic or supplement. Saturday Talks is more based on product. And so mm -hmm. we'll be really focusing on that why pre-obiotic is the number one product for your health with for life and all that. So definitely, Siobhan, thank you. Can you please add the link for Growing to Give? I, wa I want everybody to go to Growing to Give. Make sure to go to Facebook page. Make sure to watch all the videos that she's posting. She's like doing so many good talks all week. Make sure that you share with friends. Community gardens are the way to go. So make sure that you share, share, share Siobhan's uh, not-for-profit Growing to Give because we're going to need it. And so it's That's very important real. that you share that. So yeah. thank you, Siobhan. And I'm going to go you. now to um, to the questions. So do Dr. Munda, uh, Avi is from Malaysia. She's asking us something about, which is with what Siobhan was talking about too, which is why, what do you think about nightshades and the story about inflammation in our joints? So I have my views on that, but Dr. Umunda and Shavan can give us view on, uh, on uh, let's start with Dr. Umunda. Dr. Well, you got to be nightshade. careful with your nightshade foods, mainly because of, it's, you know, circulation is one of the key things. And if you're not, your body's not moving in circulation, it causes inflammation buildup, which causes pain, pains in your body. So you got certain foods that does um, refresh my thinking on the foods that nightshades. Uh, um, they are eggplant, eggplants, and tomatoes. Yes. So you got to be careful with those 
um, types of food because of what they what they're made of and what the ingredients are in them. When you're talking about nightshade foods, if she's dealing with inflammation, remember inflammation is because. And I hope everybody got their two for one in the digestive enzymes today. I hope that the special, the Tuesday special of the digestive enzymes. I hope everybody may put them in their basket because that's going to, that will help break down the contents of the food that we eat. So when you're looking at your digestive enzymes, that helps to eliminate as much inflammation that the body accumulates because of that. So I hope everybody ordered their digestive enzymes today um, and take full advantage of taking them because it does help to eliminate the inflammation that does build up in your in your body. Yes, and Navy's put it for the uh, for there for us: potatoes, tomatoes, chilies, capsicum, eggplants. And so, what happens? My view on it is that it really depends on your body. Uh, and it doesn't. I don't believe it causes uh, inflammation in every single body. It's the quantity and the quality, the quality. that will. So, uh, like Siobhan said, we're not going to stop eating tomatoes. <laughs> so, but you can take mm -hmm. the uh, the seed off. You can take, you know, you can, same thing with, my husband eats peppers every single day. And he doesn't have really any inflammation. He doesn't have any pain and he loves mm -hmm. them. We're Latino. So we put pepper in everything. Yeah. Uh, but if you overdo it and your body is sensitive uh, mm -hmm. then obviously you're going to have an issue. So it doesn't mean, oh, I can't eat nightshades because they're very bad. No, your your mm -hmm. body will talk. It will tell you what to eat. You, you can't eat tomato because you get heartburn and acid reflux. Okay, then you're sensitive to nightshades or eggplants, right. things like that. Right. Now, and that's why I said about the digestive enzymes because that'll help break down correct. those, you know, that was, you know, and help your body get what it needs out of it. So it won't give you that inflammation. Inflammation is because we're not digesting properly, you know, and our bodies, you know, and we're not taking the time chewing our food or we're not allowing our enzymes and our saliva to break our foods down for us. A lot of people make guzzle. So when you're not, you, we, we rush, we rush, eat the rut, you know, we rush eaters, you know, so you're not digesting good. So that's where inflammation comes from as well, which is number plaque. It's plaque in your cholesterol is considered plaque. You so so those are things you have to look at. Inflammation, <clears throat> you know, in our body can cause from arthritis, uric acid. So there are different there's different falls that falls under the word inflammation. You gotta look at that as well. So it depends on how much arthritis you, I mean, um, uric acid you have in your body. That's a form of what inflammation. You see. So things like that. Once you look, once you look, if you look at a list of inflammations, you'll see a whole list of things that fall under inflammation. And um, and Gabby's been saying something over and over in the chat for the people in Facebook. They might not be looking at the chat. It says lactin is what causes the inflammation. So remove the skin and the seeds where lactins exist in the vegetables that have lactin. Mm -hmm. And also, Gabby was saying processed food is the leading cause of colon cancer. Yep. Uh, and the other thing was uh, that lactin will also break the barrier. That gut barrier that we were talking about will mm -hmm. be broken by lactin. I also want to go to one more question, which is happy, Faye. And it's, should I eat? Siobhan, Siobhan Grace, would you? Oh, Siobhan. Well, just while, while you're on the topic of that, um, I was pretty sure that tomato leaves and the stem and like the whole plant is very toxic. So you, you don't want to be eating that. Uh, the same with the potato leaves and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they it is like, yeah, that's going to be harmful in large quantities. So that, you know, that's why people aren't eating the whole plant, right? So you got to be careful of what plants you're eating, but there are weeds that you can eat and make Mushrooms sure you too. learn learn about foraging because when I was running the farm market of course it was a farm that had a lot of weeds it wasn't a crop circle farm but uh people would come and these would actually be immigrants from places like uh Iran and uh Iraq and just you know maybe Russian and places like that and they would ask if they could go pick uh the weeds Mm. And there was all kinds of different weeds like lamb's ear and all, all and I'm like, 
oh my gosh. And, th but they pick them and they use them as greens. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. And be Birds careful with mushrooms too. Food, too. Mushroom is another one you got to be careful with because mushroom is a fungus. So you got to be careful with the type of mushroom and make sure you can actually test your body to see if your body um, uh, can digest it properly as well. But so mushroom is another you got to be careful. I tested, I love me some mushroom and my body's like, no more. You don't got what you needed out of mushroom. That's it. And now I can't even eat mushroom because whatever I was eating out of mushroom, I can no longer... My body doesn't receive it. Wow. All right. Uh, like I said, we're gonna. I'm gonna just show uh, the tongue scraper to uh, Coach Shar. By the way, Coach Shar is a guest from Dr. Munda. Coach Shar, we are happy to have you, and I definitely want to hear what uh, we gotta connect to see what you have to teach us next time. So, tongue scraper, Gabby Daughtry is the specialist on this. I use one that is very small, like the ones here on the right. You can get them at any drugstore. Gabby uses the these fancy ones like this she showed me not not her not when she, not when she's tongue scraping though <laughs> only the tongue scraper but Gabby's pretty pretty big uh, this is the one I use they're very small you can find them at any drugstore um coach chart okay and uh nightshade I had a picture here for those of you that don't know what the nightshades are again thank you Avis because you shared some of that so now let's go and finish up with um the detox on August 1st so like I said, a lot of uh, us, a lot of us, I mean, over 75 people were doing the longevity detox, which is based on a liquid diet and some uh, basically all vegetables, no protein, no carbs. And so we're going to leave that one and we're going to have a second round of that for the end of August. So if you want info on that, we don't want to confuse you, keep doing that. But guess what? For those that are ready to start another type of cleanse we have our digest reset with for life this pack we have been having it in north america for a long time if you're in malaysia or in singapore and other parts you may have some of the products like the fiber system the probiotics the aloe vera you may or may not have the digestive enzymes you may or may not have the super detox but i know for a fact you have the fiber system because it's one of the most sold products around the world and so you can start with just the 10 day cleanse. Dr. Munda and I will be helping you through the first 10 days. And so Dr. Munda, are we starting on August 1st? Like I'm going to choose day one, August 1st for people mm -hmm. that want to order their kit or their fiber system. And we're going to guide them through the 10 days or should we start like on the 5th or 10th to give I them think a chance to order? I've let them kit. order. I think they should order. Um, um, let's let them and so order if everybody on the first, does, right? Yeah. If, if they okay. order on the first, They'll they get, get it the amount fifth. of days, and then by the fifth or the sixth, we should be ready to start because everybody should okay. have their process. I mean, their supplements in that time, um, so we can start yeah. that process. So, not to confuse people, we're going to use the cleanse, detox, and balance group. I put the uh, the the <laughs> this group in the chat. It's a Facebook group that I've run with Michael and. Uh, um, Dr. Munda is going to be uh, doing some live, Dr. Munda and I will be doing some live Facebook feeds, uh, 10, 15 minutes. We're going to just jump in and talk about products, answer questions. So we're just going to be jumping. I'm going to probably invite Shoban to help me on, because a lot of the questions on that detox are, what can I eat? What can I not eat? So uh, I see that Shoban is going to be a great asset for this part mm -hmm. of the, what should I eat while I'm taking care of my microbiome segment. And so uh, you'll get more information. Just follow the person that invited you to this uh, Facebook uh, live video. Or uh, if you are a for life distributor, it's going to be easier because we're in the chat in the WhatsApp group. Uh, hey, Claudia, yeah. you said I had a you said a guest came in. Yeah, you have a guest. Her name I is. I have a guest. Oh, Only one. Yeah. How many guests came in? That's. Uh, she's your guest. Uh, we have all for life affiliates, but we have brand new guests that hasn't been in our. Oh, where did she go? She was here. She is Coach so Star. So, she is right, there she guest. is. She invited. Uh, she was invited by you. So guess what? Because she came in, I will be giving her a gift of her digestive enzymes for coming ah, in tonight. Let me bring her into the spot. For coming in tonight, so you can say hello to her. Let me take off her mic so she can introduce herself. <laughs> Uh, let me let me just take off your mic, Coach Shar. She's been around a long time as one of my 
long time sister friends, been hanging around me a long time. So she knows me from a long time of what I used to be over the counties, health and fair. So there you go. What's up, sweetie? How are you? Good for coming in. Yeah, I was um I saw the link that you posted on on Facebook and um I need to start taking care of my gut. So I was attracted to that specifically. Um, and you know, my mom has gastrointestinal disease. And I mean, she got all kinds of stuff wrong with her. I'm so scared. I better start doing some prevention because prevention is worth the ounce of cure, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I talked about that this morning. If you anybody mm -hmm. knows my post, I was like, what are we doing for preventive care? You know, what are we doing about that? You know, you see everything is shutting down and you can't get to certain things. What are we doing? in case of preventive care. So you have a bottle of digestive enzymes coming your way because you took time Ooh. to come out tonight and hang out with us. And I appreciate that very much. Very well, thank good. You. I appreciate and she it came too. early. She That's came good. two hours ago and I said, <laughs> you're in the wrong time, Coach Shar. You need to you need to come back later. So we definitely want to get to know you more. Thank you for coming tonight. This is the end of our meeting, but I do want to invite you, uh, not only you, Coach Shar, let me uh, let me just uh, remove spotlights from all of us so we can start saying hello and goodbye to each other on that Facebook so we can all, uh, let me remove this one and remove this one. And so that way, Facebook has all of our pictures. Uh, so I want to invite everybody to our talk with Dr. Ramunda on Saturday. Saturday is at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And again, we're going to be talking a little bit about, about again, that 10-day Fiber System Plus system. 10-day Fiber System Plus. It's digest for life. I don't know if I got the digest name right. for life. Uh, which, but yes, by the way, it should be taken with your digestive enzymes. So those should be the first two products. If that's all you want to do, just a 10 day, that's fine. If you want to continue with that detox, it goes with a liver detox after that, which is our super detox. And then the third part is the restoration or restore mm -hmm. part, which is your prebiotics, your aloe vera, and your uh, transfer factor, trifactor to make those bacteria very happy and popular really fast so we're going to be touching on all those products but again uh the most important thing two products fiber system digestive enzymes easy wheezy under a hundred dollars and you got a nice clean gut uh but obviously you're gonna to have to invest a little bit in fresh organic nice food or grow a garden to make it cheaper like like Siobhan says and 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 you're gonna have that gut, gut clean uh shower it's gonna be really good we got to add on the Firelax too. Fire, well, yeah, we're know. going to be touching on, those are more support products, but the kit yeah. itself, uh, that's what we're going to focus on. And um, and the tea for life, obviously. So we're going to touch on all the all the mm -hmm. digest products. And uh, please join the Facebook group if you haven't. Uh, that's Cleanse, Detox, and Balance. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, we're having our Red Hot Talk topic and maybe Siobhan can help me with the title because I just forgot the title and after that our business opportunity with for life if you're looking for a way to create some income to get some supplements for yourself get some free product uh, share the health share the wealth uh, our business opportunity is at 9 p.m right after red hot and uh, Siobhan what is our topic with red hot I, I, I don't know now let me see ah I, I, I have to unmute I didn't give her. I did give her co-host. Oh, it's I'm I'm playing charades. Uh, Weightlifting, uh, winning victory. <laughs> oh, uh, I should be like getting stronger. Exercise. Oh my gosh, the important the importance of an active life. Okay. <laughs> no, it's like the physical exercise. Bad news, but it's not a question mark. So oh. Let's find out what Dr. Ronnie has wow, to say tomorrow night on exciting. Red Hot Topics with the Dynamo host, Omar Renamar, which Dr. Ramunda just met. Very yes. nice. Red Hot and Uncensored on exercise. I want to hear that one. I always am like so excited to hear what she has to say. So Red Hot at 8, followed by a business opportunity on how to create income through getting people healthier. So this is what we are about. And um, Saturday, our wellness talk with Dr. Ramunda. 
And so that's all for tonight. I'm going to unmute everybody. Thank you for those that made it live. Thank you, Coach Sharp, for being our guest of the night. You are our queen of the night. And everybody that is listening to our live feed, thank you, Facebook friends. Let me turn off that Facebook. No, no I want to turn it off before I unmute everybody. And everybody can cheer on Dr. Munda and cheer on Shelvan who came in. And I didn't even tell her I was going to bring her in. Thank yes, you, everybody. Hey, Hope Claudia. Hey, thank Claudia. You. Can you? Hey, Claudia. I want to do one thank thing. You. I want. I want each one to identify. Since it's not that many of us, where you where you come in and where you tune in from. I want each one of you to identify where you're tuning in from because I want Miss Shaw to hear how international you are. Oh, all. okay. Let's start with um, Adriana. Where are you from? Uh, where are you tuning in from? I'm from Ocala, Florida. Woo, Ivelisse. Connecticut. Woo, Sonia. California. California. Avis. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur. My goodness, Avis, I wow. have never seen your hair. You got beautiful hair, woman. Wow. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's got it. Wow. Sandra, where are you tuning in from? From Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque, New wow. Mexico. Faye, where are you tuning in from? I'm from Singapore. Singapore. <laughs> wow. Gabriela Daughtry, where are you tuning in from? She's busy, maybe. Sand, oh, I, I can't get her to it. Hold on. Unmute. Oh, there we go. I'm in California, and I just finished my soup. You finished your soup. <laughs> I can't see you yet. Gabriela Daughtry, our queen of the house. Gabriela in the <laughs> house. And now with our three speakers, Chauvin, where are you tuning in from? Planet Earth. Planet Earth. <laughs> I knew she was Did, um, did Sonia uh, say where she from? California. California. Disneyland. California, but for now, she stopped by, did a pit stop in yeah. Arizona, but she is in Scottsdale, Arizona, but she is Planet Earth girl. Everybody knows her as that. Uh, Shar, I am in Canada, and Dr. Munda tuning in from? Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> with the, with yeah, she sounds so different every time I talk to her. <laughs> yeah, she is. She is. She is. And, and look, when I ask God to enlarge my territory, this Amen. is what he did, y'all. He really mm -hmm. enlarged the territory to allow me to talk to people from so many different map on the map from so many different places. And we have gained such such a love and respect for each other. And you couldn't ask for nothing better when you ask God about enlarging territory. He'd say you have to show up. He said you just have to show be there and they will mm -hmm. come. So this is where everybody comes from, so many different places. And <laughs> This fan. And it's that. more too. It's more. They just rest in the night because we got one tomorrow night. Yeah. Coach Shar, right, where are you come. tuning? I forgot to ask her where she was tuning in from. Coach Shar, where are you tuning in from? You can I'm I'm in Baltimore, but I'm from California. From California, but tuning in from Baltimore. Baltimore. Baltimore, Baltimore. Maryland. Oh, Baltimore, really Maryland. Maryland. What what kind of Very coach? Good. Are you? Very good. All right. Thank you, everybody. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Shoot at, wait a minute Claudia. Claudia. Tomorrow. Claudia, hold on. Coach. Oh, you fin are you record you weren't recording, right? I am recording. I'm yeah. Oh, because Sonia asked um Shaw what kind of coach you were. We can stop. I'm a grief coach. Want, a grief coach. Oh, okay. a a coach. coach. Oh. oh, we need her for the show, Shaw. Uh, you gotta connect with her. Shaw, you you have to uh, connect with me through Dr. Ramonda, and I'd like to invite you to do uh uh, feel good, share good show on Monday night okay. sometime in the. Oh, uh, it's probably going to be October, but. I do um, that connect you with Siobhan so she can be one of our speakers. Oh, That's such yeah. a good topic. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to. Definitely. Very good. Very good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank everybody. you. Exciting night. Bye bye, everybody. Good night, guys. Thank, Thank you all. Good night. Thank you guys. Good night, everybody. Take, um, bye -bye. Be, 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 be recording. Um,